Hi everybody, Jill Castle here again. I'm a registered dietitian and childhood nutrition expert, a blogger over at Just the Right Bite, which you can find on my website, www.jillcastle.com, and a new podcaster um, over on iTunes at The Nourished Child. And I am live with you today talking about ADHD in children. And what I really want to cover today is a new paper that came out uh, recently at the end of September. And I want to cover those updates with you because I think that you'll find them to be uh, very interesting. So in the past on my blog, I've written a blog post about a healthy diet, uh, a healthy ADHD diet for children. And during that, um, blog post I created a quick cheat sheet that covered what a healthy diet for a child with ADHD looks like. And so I want to sort of build on that and add to that and that's why I'm uh, on Facebook Live with you tonight. And hopefully um, you'll get something out of this. Please feel free to ask your questions. I'll try to answer them while I'm live. And if I don't get to your questions or I'm not able to answer them, leave them in the comment section and I will certainly um, try to get those answered uh, before I go to bed tonight <laughs> or first thing in the morning, but I will, I will try and answer them. Okay, just to sort of set the tone and um, talk about ADHD in children a little bit, um, about eight to 12% of children worldwide uh, live with or have been diagnosed with ADHD. And that is uh, a little bit of a broad uh, percentage just because different studies show different rates, but it is about um, 8 to 12 percent. And ADHD, as you know, is a behavioral condition that involves um, impulsivity, uh, uh, poor uh, emotional control sometimes, and an inability to or poor ability to focus and pay attention. So diet as um, or nutrition on a whole as it relates to children with ADHD really does matter. If you think about uh, focus and concentration and learning, those are brain activities. And we know that certain nutrients can help the brain um, attend to those activities a little bit better. The brain relies on glucose for its energy source. And where do we get glucose? We get that from our food. So nearly everything we eat breaks down into the simplest form of sugar, which is called glucose. Now, the brain can't store glucose, so we need to eat in intervals uh, throughout the day so that the brain and the body is getting a good source of glucose and nutrients or nutrition. So that kind of gives you an idea of how the brain is important. And then of course, all children, um, whether they have ADHD or not, nutrition really does matter for them as well because uh, children are growing, they're developing, we want them to thrive. And we know that food um, helps them pay attention, helps them do those things, which is a natural part of what childhood is all about. So, there was a paper that came out at the end of September and it was called The Influence of Diet on ADHD and it was published by Kathleen Holton and her colleagues. And it appeared in the Psychiatric Times, I believe was the, the journal it appeared to in. But basically um, what it covered was three basic areas. Fatty acids, if you can hear that jingle, that's my puppies in the background, I'm sorry. They like to, uh, sit at my feet and now they're jingling on our little show here. So that's Duke and Daisy, they're, they're right at my feet. Anyways, uh, fatty acids, nutrients, and processed food. So as far as fatty acids go, we're talking about omega-3 fatty acids and what this paper, what these authors found in their review of some of the recent research is that children, um, or children who have low blood levels of omega-3 fatty acids um, are, uh, might, might also have ADHD. So there's an association there. 
So that deficiency uh, does exist uh, amongst children with ADHD. Now, not all children have that deficiency, and that um, omega-3 fatty acid deficiency that certainly does not cause ADHD, but what they are showing is that if a child is deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, supplementation may be uh, very useful for them. It might be a benefit. So I'm a food first girl. So when we're talking about omega-3 fatty acids, we're really talking about fish or fish oils, um, but, but mainly the fish as a whole food as a rich source of omega-3 fatty acids. So the fish that uh, we like to focus on is um, salmon, herring, sardines, which I know can be a real challenge for children to eat, um, and chunk light tuna. So those are all um, uh, fish that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids and can help your child get more of those essential nutrients. And remember, um, omega-3 fatty acids are essential, which means uh, we as humans don't make those in our body. So we need to have those come from food. So one of the resources I'm going to include in the comments is a resource from the Natural Resource Defense Council. And that resource um, is the Smart Seafood Buyer's Guide. I'll include a link uh, two of that in the comment section for you. And it just gives you um, some good recommendations on what to, to think about when you're purchasing fish, particularly the contaminants that we need to be worried about, like mercury or lead or arsenic. We certainly don't want to um, be giving children uh, sor fish sources with high levels of those. So that guide can help you pick out the right types of fish one of the things that I think you, you'd want to keep in mind is um, fresh wild caught fish will have lower levels of those contaminants in them. So that's really something that you wanna pay attention to. Now, if your child is not a child that's going to be eating fish and you take a look at their diet and you think, wow, I'm not really even sure if my child is getting enough essential fatty acids, then perhaps a supplement might be um, a good choice for your child. That's something I would want you to talk with your physician with or um, another healthcare provider that you trust or if you have a registered dietitian in your life to have he or her check out your child's diet and, and look at whether it is adequate in essential fatty acids. Supplementation, when it comes to ADHD, when we think about the different um, fatty acids like EPA and DHA, EPA seems to be the one that's more important for ADHD. So when you're purchasing a fish oil, for example, you'll want to have one that has the balance where the EPA is higher or greater than DHA. Now, when my co-author Mary Ann and I wrote Fearless Feeding, we did the research on all the current recommendations and science behind a healthy ADHD diet. And at that time, uh, the recommendation for uh, fish oil supplementation was 300 to 600 milligrams per day for two to three months to see if that showed a benefit in your child. So again, uh, those recommendations are what was current back in 2013 when we published that book. I haven't seen anything updated from that, but again, talk with your healthcare provider if you think that that's a question for your child and could be of benefit for your child. Okay, number two, nutrients. That's the second part of what this paper discussed. We know that children with ADHD um, may tend to have low vitamin D concentrations in their body. So there is an association of low vitamin D and ADHD in children. Again, low vitamin D does not cause ADHD. It just is a finding in the science or in the research in children with ADHD that suggests that perhaps that might be a nutrient for some children that um, is deficient. 
So that's one thing. And frankly, a lot of kids um, are deficient in vitamin D, unfortunately. I don't have those numbers off the top of my head, but I do know that um, in northern states where there's uh, less sun exposure um, during the winter months, in children who um, are dark skinned, uh, and even in children who are overweight, all of those children tend to um, have lower vitamin D stores. So it doesn't surprise me that children with ADHD might also, but again, that's another consideration. Um, another nutrient that is, uh, has been shown to be low in children with ADHD is iron, as well as zinc and magnesium. Again, I'm a food first girl, so I'm gonna always suggest that you build those nutrients into your child's diet as best you can. So vitamin D is going to be um, fortified dairy products, for example. Mushrooms are another rich source of vitamin D. But a lot of children, if they're not getting it, might need to have a supplement. Again, taking a vitamin D supplement is something you should discuss with your physician. Iron, zinc, and magnesium, if those levels are low, and again, the research is showing that in some children with ADHD, those le levels do tend to run low. Um, if your child has ADHD and has a low blood level of iron or of zinc or of magnesium, there is a moderate effect when you use supplementation to correct those levels. So again, this is something you want to check with your healthcare provider if you're really concerned. However, you can always um, improve your child's diet with the food that he's eating. So again, iron sources, you're going to find great sources of, of iron in foods like beef, dark meat, poultry, like chicken or turkey, um, lamb. You're going to find great sources of iron in dark green leafy vegetables in beans. So again, there's a wide variety of foods that you can focus on that are going to be rich in iron uh, that you can build more of that into your child's diet. Same with zinc and same with magnesium. If your child is um, deficient in iron, that's generally something we want to correct pretty quickly. And generally we want to correct that with an iron supplement to get that level back up. And um, but by, but also at the same time improving the diet. So again, check with your pediatrician, your doctor, your family health care provider uh, if you have questions about that. Now, in the cheat sheet that I made for the blog post that I wrote called The Healthy ADHD Diet, I include a list of foods in all of those categories. So you'll find a list of iron-rich food sources. You'll find a list of zinc rich food sources, magnesium food sources, and I think even folate, folic acid um, sources of food in that cheat sheet as well. So it gives you sort of a guideline for improving those uh, nutrients in your child's diet. Okay, so we went over fatty acids, we've gone over uh, nutrients, and now we're gonna talk about processed food. That's the third aspect of this paper. So when we're talking about processed food, we're really talking about food dyes or food colors and additives. So food colors are things like um, red number 40, yellow number five, uh, yellow number six. Those are food colors that make our children's food and our food, quite frankly, colorful and delicious looking and enticing. You're gonna find food colors or food dyes in a lot of kids' foods like cereal, candy, and even beverages. So it's pretty, um, I don't wanna say widespread, but in a lot of the processed packaged foods, you'll find uh, food colors, or you might find food additives. And again, what the research in children uh, with ADHD is showing is that some kids with ADHD are sensitive to these uh, food colorings, food dyes, and food additives. And when we say sensitive, that basically means they experience a change in their behavior when they ingest these foods. So additives are things like 
aspartame, MSG, nitrates, and nitrites. And again, you can find this information on your food packages. You just look at the ingredient list and you can see which foods contain food colors, food additives, and that's what you want to look for. So what do you do if your child has a diet with a lot of processed food in it? So in my experience in working with families, I can tell you what doesn't work. What doesn't work is taking all those foods out of your child's diet um, in a really strict manner and uh, just sweeping them all out and saying, hey, we're gonna go all food, all whole food. If you have a child that's been um, eating on a regular basis, quite a bit of processed food, my suggestion would be pick one or two of those foods and weed them out and really sort of take it as a titration, gently um, pulling those foods out of your child's diet and replacing them with alternatives that might not have the food colors or might include natural food colors as opposed to artificial food colors, um, but really try to sort of titrate that diet to a healthier place if you can. Now, again, food dyes, food colors, food additives do not cause ADHD, uh, but there is some research that suggests that there is a segment of children with ADHD who have uh, experienced an effect in their behavior as a, as a result of ingesting those foods. So again, what does a healthy ADHD diet look like? It's a diet of real food. It's, it's natural protein sources, it's whole grains, it's fruits, it's vegetables, it's dairy products, or if you're not a dairy product, uh, user, it's non-dairy substitutes that are fortified with calcium and vitamin D. So it's a well-rounded, well-balanced diet. It's, it's food that appears um, at three to four hour intervals if you have a child in school throughout the day. So again, that, that, those nutrients and that, um, that carbohydrate and that protein is all reaching the body and the brain and keeping your child um, energized and focused and able to learn and concentrate. So if you have questions about any of this, again, please uh, let me know in the comments. I will be happy uh, to address those for you. I will include that resource on um, the Smart Seafood Buying Guide. I'll include that in the link. I'll also include the link to the Healthy ADH Diet cheat sheets that I have. And um, the only other thing I would say is if you have uh, more questions, you know, don't feel free to reach out. I will actually probably cover this topic um, in a future blog post, and I will probably also cover it on my podcast, The Nourished Child. I'm going to re reach out to one of the researchers and see if I can um, have them be a guest on the show. So stay tuned for more. I just wanted to update you and uh, share this more recent information that I have learned about and let you know about it. Hope you have a great night and we'll see you soon. Bye now.